All right. Welcome back to Current Affairs Taiwan. We hope that everything works this time, but in the headphones there was a bizarre little hiss, which we can't seem to figure out, but hopefully that won't actually record. So, uh, I'm Donovan Smith, and this is Michael Turton, and why don't you kick, kick us off? Yeah, big rally today with Han Goyu. Yeah, yesterday. Yeah. Well, that was yesterday. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. That's right. Today's Monday. I keep thinking yeah. it's Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> so, Han made his, announced his core message. Yep. Support the ROC. Yep. Support Chinese-ness. <laughs> yeah, Chinese culture, yeah. Uh-huh. Democracy and freedom. Yep. And then way down there at the bottom was help the struggling people. Yeah, or at least Support not the forget struggling. them. Uh, yeah. 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 So don't forget about the, those who are still struggling in life. So, all right. So he's come out strong ROC nationalist. He's come out as a strong cultural nationalist. Um, and he's basically laid down the gauntlet. He is Hong Xiuju, which I thought was funny. During the rally, when Hong Shouju came up and spoke, yeah, did you see that part? No, I missed it. So she came up and she said, "Well, I have to admit, I kind of don't like Han Guoyu. I have a problem <laughs> with him." And she said the reason is because a lot of people think that he is that he's just a second version of her. She said that. She said that on stage. On stage. Yes. <laughs> and. <clears throat> then Even she said, she well, knows. we do have some differences, you know, but we both believe in, you know, we both are straightforward and straight spoken. And anyway, it was I, I, I it was one of many jaw dropping uh, bits to that uh, to that rally. Well, you know, she would have everyone wearing hair shirts. He wants two <laughs> chickens in every pot. Yes. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. But essentially, they're they're the same. Well, my angel said that, too. And she came out. Remember? He said, he? Yeah. he said, she and I have the same values. Oh, that's right. Yeah, and he was yeah, there yeah. speaking for Han yep. for a while. <laughs> for, and that was the other jaw, another jaw dropping. <laughs> what happened? Well, I, I, okay, from what I can reconstruct, because I've heard slightly different stories and the TV had slightly different things going on. <clears throat> we know for a fact that Mayim Joe was getting booed and people were calling for him to step down. Right. <clears throat> there was another woman up on the stage who was, you know, shushing them with her, with her finger. <laughs> now, it, I, what, the one part that I'm a little unclear on is because Han, he, mind you, was on stage late, and Han Guo was running late as well, but he kind of showed up mid, middle while he was speaking. Now, what I don't know is whether people were, were booing uh, mind Zhou prior to when Han showed up or not. I'm not really sure, or if they just wanted to shut him up after Han Guoyu showed up. Um, and then Maing Zhou, and basically, Han Guoyu came out, and you know things were starting to get unruly in the crowd. And so they basically just quickly switched to Han, and Maing Zhou turned to the person next to him and said, I'm not finished yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a ma thing to say. <laughs> and so basically what, what, what was going on here is we had the ex-president, one of the biggest grandees in the party, getting booed at the inaugural big launch rally of the party's KMT candidate for president. Well, that augurs well for the future. It definitely is. <laughs> if, you're pro DP, yes. if you're pro-DBB. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> and so, I mean, I was just looking at this, and it's just, wow, that's incredible. Yeah. There was a couple things that really struck me. One was mm -hmm. that... He, he came back to Hong Xiuzhu's line is, if we lose this election, the ROC will perish. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, of course, what he means is the rule by the colonial ruling class of the KMT will perish. He's been saying that, actually, for a while now. Yeah, he's been he, talking. He's really talking about In that. In January, remember? We, yeah. I came to you and we talked about this. Yes. Yeah. 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 So that's when I thought, eh, nope, he ain't going to win this election. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I mean, oh, well, let's put it this way. In a head-to-head -head race with um, Tsai Ing-wen, there's just no hope. And, you know, that post-Sunflower, you know, he can't, he can't win with his 20-some-odd percent hardcore base. I'm going to, in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to do a little research and try and figure out what that exact number is. But I want to know what his floor is. And I don't think they're going to abandon him easily. No. And, and this is one of the rare things that I disagreed with Nathan Battle on. He's, he's talking about already that there's going to be one of, if Terry Go runs, which we assume now, go time, go, you know, go timing, um, <clears throat> that there will be a strategic 
voter shift. And I think with Hans voters, it's unlikely that they'll do that. Now, Terry Goh's voters, yeah, I could see them doing it if his support falls below 20%. But a lot of those voters who are who supporting Han, they're, they're not budging. They're not yeah. going for anyone else. They're not just fans. They're part of a cult now. They're, they're insane. And I saw a quote, and ah. I was thinking about this this morning, is that fans seems like almost too weak of a word. Yeah. And so mm. I sit down, and I open up you know, the news today, and, and there was a quote in the CNA article on this where this guy said, I used to be a Han fan. Now I'm part of his troop. Yeah. That's scary. And so he's got these people locked down. And so for them to shift their vote strategically. So the real question is, is whether Terry Go is going to take off, whether Guo Taiming can pull this off. If, and everyone's talking like it's, it, it's a fait accompli, but I wouldn't bet on it yet. I think it's likely, or it makes sense, but I don't know if they'll be able to work out how it's going to work. But if he gets Terry Go, if Terry Go gets Wang Jinping and Ke Wenzhou behind him, he will get a certain demographic. Now, he's still kind of in a honeymoon phase. If he decides to run, he's going to be in a bigger honeymoon phase. Then the press is going to pile in on him, which they haven't really done yet. Yeah. Now, he may just come apart at the seams. But if he doesn't, then we've got a three-way race. A real three-way race. A real three-way race. Yeah. And remember, we've had real three-way races before and you know, in the 2000 election. Yep. I was looking neck and neck until late in the game when Lian Chan started to crumble. <laughs> and he still did well. I mean, he didn't do terribly. He got 24%. Probably a lot yeah. of that is the same demographic that's voting for uh, Han Guo <laughs> You know, the other thing that yeah. struck me with Han, and he had to come out and make a statement in, in support of the Hong Kong protesters. Yes. And there, that was... All the KMTs doing that. You, you, yes. And it, but it took, he was like the last one to do so. Yeah. Um, I haven't heard Hong Shou Tu do it, but I haven't been really paying attention there. We'll get to the, we'll get to that juicy story in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so Han mm -hmm. added another on top of his pile of gaffes. Mm -hmm. He was late for a meeting with a delegation of Japanese geopolitical scholars. Mm -hmm. and then he blamed them. Yep. And then uh, Terry, but, Terry. But what it actually happened is he or his government or somebody changed the venue and neglected to tell the Japanese delegation. And that's why they were late. I see. That's what happened. So they were late, but because of a screw-up. By him. Or his team. Yes. Right, right, by his side. So, yeah, they were going to another venue, and they were basically, like, called and said, w what? no, 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 we changed the venue. So they were late. But the point is, he didn't just graciously say, oh, let's start the show. Yeah. Yeah, and then he had to mention it. Yeah. So Guo Timing trolled him. Yep. Saying... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He met the same. He met the same delegation, and he's just like, "We weren't late." You <laughs> didn't need to say much, you know. I mean, it's kind of like I can figure out how to show up at a meeting on time. It's basically the subtext here. So, hands, yeah. hands, um, hand double down on his comments on Filipino workers here. Yeah, he didn't he's... want immigrants, uh, migrants who cause crime and all that stuff. Yeah. So now he was saying, was it the, with the customs? which he, screw, he mixed up customs and immigration, and he said that since the, the new southbound policy has opened up to visa-free travel from Southeast Asian countries, that now there's this massive uptick in, in prostitution, using the term chickens, which is slang for this. Um, you know, even though he was talking about, and he was talking about how, the, how customs was overwhelmed with this, even though they're the wrong department, <laughs> it's immigration. <laughs> <laughs> and that there has been, uh, and I saw a statistic that th something like 3% of all people who've come through on this program have had some problem, which could be anything, not necessarily prostitution right. or running. They could have just overstayed by a day That's or something. That's probably know? the most likely, uh, yeah. The vast majority would be overstays. Yeah. But there's been a lot of news recently with uh, periodic busts of Vietnamese prostitutes. Yeah. With the emphasis but they're not on large numbers. No, there's it's like five or ten or twelve. Yeah, it's not any big you know, deal. It's like you know, so yeah, these are, they're gonna happen, but you know, compared to the numbers that are coming through, it's 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 a minuscule problem. Yep. 
And Tsai went after him this week for those comments. Yes. Tsai Ing-wen went after him, which was good to see the president talking about this. And my, my Filipino girlfriend passed those around to me yeah. with, with little hearts. Yes. <laughs> that was so cute. But yeah. The point is, in those migrant communities, that negative commentary about Han is going to be leaking out into the Taiwanese that they interact with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I, I actually now I'm on that, uh, the Pinoy, what, what do they call it, a reporter or something. It's the Filipino. I check it every day now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I used to follow that on my blog. Yeah. So, you know, I follow that. Those and guys they, are they good. They were pretty happy about the about Tsai Ing-wen coming out in yeah. support. That was, yeah, that was, that was good to see. Another thing that happened this week with Han was the poll from TVBS. <laughs> Tell us about the poll from TVBS. Well, it shows he's, his support is falling. And it's from yeah. TVBS, which is a pro-blue station. It yeah. doesn't share Wang of HTC own it, I think. I'm not sure. It, it used to be Chinese-owned. Yeah. Remember in the Chen administration, they found that it was owned by, uh, it was 100% owned by Chinese, 50%, 50%, and they had addresses next to each other in the Bahamas or something. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember the entire story. Oh, that's romantic. Yeah, it's so cute. How <laughs> <So> cute. <laughs> <laughs> so now there's all this, this constant flow of talk that Han needs to be swapped out for a more appealing candidate. But yeah. it's hard to see that happening so close and that rally to the deadline. Yesterday, and that's actually what I, I wanted to talk a little bit about the rally more, if I could, is <clears throat> that rally, outside of the timing when he walked out on stage with Ma ying I think it was his best rally yet. Um, <clears throat> it was, you know, it, it was very well attended. Um, there was a sea of people there. I mean, I don't buy the number of 350,000 that the organizers give, but I never, you know, believe the numbers organizers give. But there was, there was at least 100,000 people there. Yeah, for sure. Know. Yeah. Um, and they were very enthusiastic. They were there all day. They were showing up early in the afternoon. Wow. Um, you know, when they opened up the gates, I think it was one or two in the afternoon, it was already flood, flooded out. Wow. And, um... You know, so this, these were huge crowds. So I don't, and you remember there was that article a few weeks back, we commented on it, where that um, standing committee member, whatever, when he started going after, he, that was the first oh, yeah, one he yeah. talked about being yeah. drunk. But I was more interested in his other criticisms, <clears throat> which, and one of them, though, he said, is you've got to get your followers under control. Yeah. The KMT is afraid of Han's followers. Yeah. And they're not all traditional KMT supporters by any means. No. Um, they're supporting him for reasons that are very different. Um, and so I think that the KMT can't, uh, they, they're way more loyal than Hong Cho Chu's followers were. Right. They would turn violent. Some of them, I think, would genuinely turn violent. Well, they'd they be really upset. Them. Yes. Yeah. And they probably would go home and not vote. There's a lot of them would do that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, or they would switch to another party. And, you know. But mm. so much depends on, because let's not forget, this election is not just about the presidency. The legislature is also at stake. Yes. And a lot of legislative yes. seats. And, and so much is going to depend on how Han can get people out to vote for those legislators. Yeah. And so it's hard for me to imagine anyone that, led, that people are going to come out to vote for who's going to have coattails that are going to pull in a lot of legislators yeah. as well. Other than maybe Hoyoi. And yeah. And Hoyoi doesn't seem to want the position, and he wants nothing to do with Ang Woyi. No. Why would you do that? <laughs> if, if Hoyoi suddenly jumped in, Han supporters would hate him forever. Yeah. So he'd lose that block of voters yeah. forever. And he, he's underlying the point is that he was elected to do the job of new Taipei mayor, and he's going to stick to his job. It's a great criticism of Han yes. and Ko Wenja. Yes. <laughs> Ko Wenja a little bit less so, because he's already served one term. Right. You know, and so, and Ko Wenja is looking like he won't run anyway, so. Well, yeah. it's another thing that is important to remember with Han is that his voter base listens to the pro-China news and, mm -hmm. follow, and they follow line groups that, are, that get a lot of fake news from China. Yeah. So they're not seeing many criticisms of Han. Mm -hmm. And anything they get is distorted, if they get it at all. Yeah. So and, that, <clears throat> that voter block is in a bubble. Yeah. Very scary. Very much. And, but if you watch this rally, there's a few things that I, I thought were really quite remarkable. Number one is this time he came out punching which he normally doesn't do. He was swearing on stage. Oh, he wow. He was defiant. Uh, and they, there was all these chants about, you know, uh, you know, it, you know, if they mohe or they slander us, uh, the cleaner we will be. There's a you know, massive crowd chanting. And what they're doing very, very clearly is that he's attacking the press 
for all these negative stories. And he's like, so on Monday, they say that I'm out drunk. And then on Tuesday, I'm the world's biggest gambler. And then on Wednesday, I have a mistress. And, and he, he played it up. Yeah, yeah. And he was funny. His timing was good. Of course. He knows how to talk. He's a fabulous <clears throat> talker. And they had, uh, it's, they had uh, sound effects accompanying, <laughs> you know, the <laughs> joke, like on the variety shows. Right, right. Um, so it was in a lot of ways. It was kind of like watching a variety show with a political theme. It was, but he was defiant. He it's swore Trump. on the stage, which is very like in the past. He's always been very amiable, and let's get along. And he didn't. He doesn't go on the. And traditionally, he hasn't gone on the attack. Right. And this time, he was defiant. Go ahead, come after me, media. You can come up with, you know, me on Monday, I'm this, and Tuesday, I'm that. But we'll fight back, kind of an attitude. But how is that going to get all the voters who are, who are light and uncommitted? I don't see how it does that, but it certainly keeps his base. His base dope. Now, he also came out, and I saw this, it was on the KMT website, actually. They, they quoted him on this. As he said, a three-way race is not necessarily a bad thing because Terry Go, if particularly if allied with Kowenja, takes votes from Tsai Ing-wen. Yes, and which he, is he, true. He, oh yeah, it's like exactly true. More votes from Tsai than him. Yep. And so, you know, he's, he's fine with a three-way race. Well, right now, For now. right mm -hmm. now he, he takes more votes from Tsai than from Han. Yeah. So, that could change. Yeah. Yeah. One other comment that got passed around Twitter in Chinese that I thought was really funny was someone said that Kowenja is basically Han Goyu with his pants pulled up to his belly button. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed for about an hour after I read that. <laughs> uh, there, so. there are definitely differences, but that is funny considering uh, <laughs> considering Kowenja's comments about Chen Zhu this week. Oh. Oh. So Guo Taimi, mm -hmm. big news from him we're, we're supposed to get. Which news? The one about that's supposed to happen on September 13th. I'm trying to prime you for this comment. Oh, right. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, folks. Yeah. He's slow today. <laughs> <laughs> I've been very busy the last couple of weeks. I, yeah, he's basically running. So what's his latest comment? Well, he's gonna, the, the media was reporting today that he'll be announcing after the Mid-Autumn Festival. Oh, right. Okay. On September okay. 13th. Yeah, I saw that. I didn't know it was on the 13th specifically. That's what, after the 13th is what right. they said. Yeah, that's what I saw, after. <laughs> but he'd already said it had to be decided by the 17th, so I didn't see that it's as It's got to be now. So the 17th is Tuesday. So he has to announce basically this weekend or else he's done. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, he's actually openly making references to, you know, if I were president and, you know, yeah. He, 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 the chances right now, I mean, there is a chance he may not run. But there's no obvious reason that I can see right now that, that would discourage him. He's ahead um, with Ke's backing, with Ke doesn't seem to have any problem with doing this, is um, he's, he's ahead in some of the polls of Han Guoyu. He's and, ahead of Tsai in a couple of polls. Yeah, I, but I think more credibly, I think the, there's some polls that have him ahead. I think that for a little, I think what's going to happen is if he's going to announce he's going to run, if he can get Ke Wenzhe and Wang Jinping on board, there's going to be he's going to see a big spike in the polls. Right. Then the press is going to come after him, and the DPP is going to come after him, and the KMT is going to come after him, and then the question is whether and he's going to come down again in the polls. The honeymoon's going to be over. Right. Now the question is, does he just keep going straight down into oblivion, and then his voters abandon him and vote for somebody else or stay home? Who would his voters abandon or, him for? They could return to Tsai. Or they could shift to hand, and none of them are going to shift to hand. Right. None of those under 40 KMTs Very are going to look at Han Goyer and say, I love this man. Yeah. This is not going to happen. A lot of them may go back to Tsai Ing-wen, but so that's really what I want to see is can Terry go hack it? And if he can, and if he can hold out, that becomes the core potential, even if he loses, right. but he does respectably, yeah. particularly if he gets Wang Jinping in his corner and Ke Pi, and uh, he does better than Han Guoyu in the final election, we've got another party. We've got a light blue force, a, a new light blue force. Well, that's what they said about Sung. Right. And he so had, the question is... He had one election, basically. Yes. And he did do well. He almost got to be president. Yes, he almost got to be president, and it was the second largest party in the legislature. For a while. Yeah, for quite a while. And then they all went back to the KMT. Right. 
But they but there might not be any KMT to go back to in another and the couple KMT of elections. Is not rich anymore. Nope. And the factions are getting old and dying off. And Wang Jinping <laughs> may peel them off. And they were never loyal to the KMT. Really, they were loyal to the patronage to the, the flow of money. Yeah. Yeah, and money and power. That was really what they were there for. And you know, so uh, and and there's a lot of demographics that have never loved the KMT, they just hate the DPP. Right. Because they're, you know, Hoklo speaking Taiwanese nationalists. Right. So that's how they perceive them. Yeah. yeah, that's how the DPP is perceived. So if you're Hakka, you vote KMT. Right. But, you know, if you're indigenous, you vote KMT. But the first option that, that comes up that's not, they're not DPP, they're very likely to vote for it. The yeah. MPP showed this. Yes. They won in blue areas. Right. Um, and, you know, Taipei, there's a lot of Taipei younger, you know, mainlander families, but they're younger. They identify as Taiwanese, but they still kind of almost instinctively still are nervous about the DPP. Yeah. Give them an NPP, an SDP, even the Trees Party. They, you know, they, they'll, they'll go for that if they think it's viable. And I think a lot of them went for Kepi. Yes, and they're all gonna. If Cubby backs, whoa! If Cubby backs Guo, and Guo can take enough votes from Tai, mm -hmm. it could be a very close election. But mm -hmm. of course, the campaign hasn't started, and yes. so much depends on the campaign. Yes, so much depends, and and know, on the media, and the media. Yeah, the pro-China the media is going to be lining up against Guo timing. Yep, and so will the green media. But see, here's the interesting thing about the Chinese. You know, the pro-China media is that pretty much my theory is that the only people watching them are Hanguoyu fans supporters anyway yeah that's probably true but no because a lot of, except for the restaurants that are paid exactly month, but i don't think most people are paying attention to it. and though they're not but nevertheless they'll be there so mm -hmm. who tvbs supports is going to be crucial yeah so it's going to be a very interesting election and you know i i could easily see a situation where basically other plan, pan blue media just simply goes after after you know, after Robert Tsai. Possibly. I, I want to see... You mean Robert Tsai, who, who owns the China Times? Yeah, I yeah. want to see where the UDN comes down, too. They'll probably stick with the KMT party line, but <laughs> if they break, that would be very interesting. Another interesting thing which I've noticed recently is, have you noticed the Taipei Times? Has they? I mean, they were clearly pro-William Lai. Oh, yeah. Not, not as pro, was Taiwan News. The Taiwan News, which was gave like, a very exaggerated, a very exaggerated view of the, the lies chances. Taipei Times was a little more subtle about it, but they still seem like not really very into. No, Taiwan. they're dutifully pro Thai. But they, there's sometimes they've been running articles recently which are pretty critical. Yeah, which is un, un, a little surprising coming out of them, and I'm kind of wondering if they're wobbling a little on the. Nah. nah anyway, Liberty we'll Times. Yeah. So listen, this week you've probably heard on the news that Solomon's Islands is going to switch. And everyone is reporting that. All kinds of media are reporting that. Reuters. Reuters did. And yet, just this week, the Minister of Foreign Affairs from Solomon's Islands was here in Taipei. Yep. So the switch has not happened yet. Right. Now, we might wake up tomorrow and find out they switched. But mm -hmm. still, hasn't happened. Don't panic yet. Wasn't Solomon in the Bible somebody who, like cut people in half or something like that? Yeah, that was the famous one about the baby. Okay. Yeah, with the two women. I wasn't raised religious. So I, <laughs> I sorta of, I sorta of know these. I had to stories. study it. I was raised religious, but I right. forgot it. Yeah. You know when you're thirteen, what are you paying attention to in catechism class? The girls. Of course. Yes. That would I assume is what yes, you're paying attention exactly. to. Exactly. Oh, all right. So lots of fun this week as mm -hmm. uh, former Jai County Chief Chen Ming one forgot. Ninety-five thousand U.S. dollars on the train, three million Oops. NT in cash Oops. on the HSR. Or was it his son who lost it? No, it was him. He it was said. Him who lost. But he said. Oh, okay. On his way to. Uh, but it was his son who got arrested. I'm actually slightly confused on this story. It was the son who went to pick it up, saying that the money was for him to use in Philippines because he didn't have a bank or credit card down there. Right. The poor lad. Right. I know. You're. So he was going to bring in ninety-five thousand in cash. Son of a major DPP politician can't <laughs> swing a bank account. Must be a foreign national. That's probably why. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, this 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 whole thing stinks. But I'm not going to speculate in public. Yeah. No, and then in New Taipei City, DPP Councilor Kao Minhui was uh, Kao Minhui was arrested. Yeah. For shenanigans with money. 
Yeah. And you were telling me about a case down in Taidong as well. I think that one's KMT or independent. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't think that one was DPP. It's just this litany of stupidity. Yeah. The, uh, I, in a lot of ways, the, the DPP is starting to resemble the KMT of yore. Um, they only had one party to teach them how to be a party. Yep. I mean, they're more, you know, they're more used to power. They're more entrenched in power. They're, you know, there's certain people in the DPP who I think are, they're taking it for granted, yeah. particularly in the South. Ping Dong. Um, yep. And so they've just taken over, you know, where the KMT used to be. And a lot of them literally were KMT members. <laughs> That's true. You know. The former, 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 former mayor of Taichung, for example. Yeah. Um, the, um, you know, I mean, the, the, the party chair, the DPP party chair used to be KMT. Um, now, he wasn't a, a politician. But, I mean, a whole lot of the factional polls in the south, in the center and south, did move over yeah. to the DPP. Yeah. Um, you know, and then of course we've got the forward-looking infrastructure project, and there's money sloshing around. Oh yeah, um, there's got to be some stories in there. Pay attention yeah. to that. Although you know, with certain, you know, but now that was all set up to go into all these newly elected green uh, local governments. <laughs> except, except they all, and the money's really only starting to flow recently, and it will start <laughs> coming online over the next few years. And all of a sudden, now they're blue administrations so that plan kind of backfired on the on the dpp i think they just didn't get a lot of the money flowing fast enough to help them during that last electoral cycle that's probably true but they ran such complacent campaigns yeah and it just so anyway oh speaking of stupid that Tsai <laughs> england phd thesis thing is still going on size oh. Tsai said she'll sue them yeah but it's 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 a non-story. Even if what they're alleging is true, apparently a guy who wasn't a PhD was her advisor, but that was relatively normal back in the 80s because very few people had PhDs back then. And so what? <laughs> so what if her advisor... It was a normal practice yeah, uh, in yeah, what she was doing. Even if it wasn't, so what? It's not like... I don't think there's a they're, law They're just nitpicking to, with it. Yeah. I think Kerslake had the best comment when he said, my, my friend Drew Kerslake, yeah. who's, who's very smart and a very good observer of Taiwan politics, noted that whatever they're talking, when they start talking about Tsai Ing-wen's degree, you should start thinking, there's something wrong with Han Goyer's degree. <laughs> 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 there might be some truth to that. But I mean, they went after Ma Ying Zhou's PhD. The saying, DPP did. The DPP did. There and, was a green was, smear about it that. It wasn't even, that wasn't very accurate either. It was a complete farce. Um, yeah, it was, you know, they made like a, a few minor English errors into a thousand errors or something crazy like this. Yeah. Yeah. It was ridiculous. Yeah, it was ridiculous. All right. Well, I think we've come to a stopping point. Yeah, there's lots more we could talk about, but I think, <laughs> I, I think there's more than enough there to digest. <laughs> Thanks for being here this week, and we will see you again next week with another edition. All right. And hopefully this time will work technically, and eventually we can drop the pilot at That's the right. end of the, <laughs> of the title. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, guys. All right.